Hi everyone, uh, I'm Kat. I'm the Community and Engagement Manager for Lean Agile Global 2021. In the lead up to the live virtual conference on 24th and 25th May, I will be introducing you to some of the fantastic speakers in our lineup. Today, I'm delighted to introduce you to Charlotte Mall, founder and co-director of Change Optimized, as well as Ro Gorel, uh, Gorel, my apologies, uh, change strategist at Change Optimize as well. Welcome you two. Great to have you here. Hi. Thanks, Thanks Kat. Yeah, absolutely. So I prepared five questions for you guys today. To get started, I'm going to throw to Charlotte. Um, how would you describe yourself in a single tweet? Okay, so I thought about this and um, I've gone with a future orientated change and transformation expert. Uh, who's trustworthy, energetic, and people orientated, and I like to have lots of fun. Fantastic. I love the future orientated. That's obviously very important in an agile world and love that it's right at the beginning um, of your statement there. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm always looking to the future. <laughs> love that. And uh, Ro, how about for yourself? So I went for a slightly different tech. So I've actually gone for short phrases. So I've got learning ninja, team coach, change expert, ex-classicist, singer, dancer, and weightlifter. Awesome. I love that. I love the ninja. Always love, you know, a really fun uh, word in there. I actually had um, one of our other speakers uh, identified herself as a DJ, and I absolutely loved that. So I um, love that. And it really just kind of showcases who you are very quickly. Really, really like that. Um, so, Ro, just because you, uh, we were just talking to you there, um, the next question I'm going to give to you first. Uh, in your opinion, why should people come and join us virtually at Lean Agile Global this year? So, yeah, that's a, it's a brilliant question. And um, it's also a brilliant opportunity. So if you look at the lineup of speakers that are actually in the program this year, it's amazing. You've got huge diversity, which is fantastic. Um, I think you've also got some really interesting topics. Um, there are a couple of people on there who I particularly love listening to all the time, you know, Liz Keogh, Judy Reese, and of course, Jason Little, who we know very well. Um, and there's something on there about, um, I think it was underpant gnomes, which yes. sounded really, really <laughs> intriguing in relation to Kanban. I'm not quite sure what that's about, but it sounded like fun. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's basically an opportunity to get different dishes of lean agile um, to ignite your hunger so that you want to go back for more. Yeah, fantastic. And Charlotte, how about for you? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, as Rose said, there's some really great um, people on the on the on the program. Uh, Liz Keogh, I love the way she describes and talks about um, Kenefin. I think um, she brings it into a really practical um, way of of applying it and makes it easier for people to potentially, you know, to understand it. Um, yeah, and of course, Jason and Jason Little, and we've been working with him for a number of years um, and love the work that he's done. And um, yeah, I just think it's a great opportunity to have that diversity of thought and, you know, just maybe get a different slant on what we, you know, and what you believe is, is about agile and lean. So I think there's a great opportunity and I love the global nature of it. Um, so yeah, fantastic. Amazing. And yes, the global nature of it and the diversity that we've, you know, tried to bring together, we find really important because, you know, everyone's agile is different. And, yeah. and I really love that about, about agile as a community um, and as about a way of working because there truly is, you know, so many different ways to think about it. So bringing some fantastic mm -hmm. minds from around the world really gives us the opportunity to, to think about what exactly does underpants and gnomes really mean. <laughs> <laughs> I want yes. to know. <laughs> it, it, it does sound I won't give any I won't give any uh, points away but it does sound like a very interesting talk so <laughs> amazing well we've talked a little bit about the global side of it and obviously the diversity that we have in our speakers um, we at Lean Agile Global truly want to create a diverse and inclusive conference so I'd love to know what does uh, what does that mean to you and uh, Charlotte maybe I'll go with you first um, yeah so I Thinking about that as a question, that that diversity, um, we often think in diversity in terms of, of gender diversity, um, but I think the, the approach with this is around that thinking diversity. Um, so you've got 
uh, the ability to safely challenge and safely um, understand and question and be curious about other perspectives. And that's what diversity is all about. So um, often, yeah, that diversity agenda gets caught up on, um, on, on gender, but I think this is more about diversity of thought and, in, and the inclusiveness is around, it's okay to have a different perspective. Um, just be uh, mindful and respectful of those other people's perspectives. And sometimes, you know, you may actually realize that maybe you have been thinking of things in maybe a way that you is not as useful as taking on some other's um, viewpoints. Yeah, mm. Absolutely. And uh, Ro, anything you'd like to add to that? So I think, yeah, for me, that cognitive diversity is really um, crucial, particularly when you're thinking about teams and self-organizing teams and the ability to actually embrace and work with that cognitive diversity because um, I think often in teams that's probably where some of the the challenges come from it's that ability to understand other people's perspectives as Charlotte said and also to to welcome other ideas because if, if you stay with the same kind of people all the time you're never actually going to have new ideas um, so being able to think differently and to have that that different and it, it's not just thinking as well it's also the sort of where people's experiences life experiences where they're coming from and, and there's been a lot of research in terms of um you know ma matching people who are of an older generation with a younger generation because they both learn from each other because they've got different life experiences and that's really important as well and if i think back over my career where i learned the most was where i had that diversity in the team um, and it was always great to get graduates in the team to get that new way of thinking and they challenge your thinking as well, which is fantastic, because you can often get into a thinking rut. So yeah, um, mm. it's, it's certainly something that I, I really um, am passionate about in terms of how we work together. Um, and, and making sure it's that, that whole range of diversity, you know, if you think about use the word class system, but you know, everybody's background, we've all got something to offer. Um, and it's about getting all of those voices into the room. So for me, it's not, it's not just about diversity, I guess it's also about justice as well, um, hearing everybody's voice. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I appreciate, you know, speaking to hearing everybody's voice, one thing that you said, Charlotte, was the word safe. Um, and, and that's something that we, we really want to ensure that we create is a safe space that your opinions are valid, you know, even if you don't necessarily agree with someone else's or, you know, we want to, to we want to be able to provide people with a safe space that they can feel confident in saying what they truly feel and they truly believe and allow it to bounce off of people. And what you were saying, Ro, about, you know, having different perspectives and, you know, a, a range of people to help organize teams. I saw a very lovely TED talk recently that was talking about eureka moments yeah. and that, you know, you, when, when you have that eureka moment where you say, yes, that's the idea I was looking for. You never, even though you think you've come up with that yourself, you never mm -hmm. truly come to that on your own. It is yeah every interaction that you've had, every conversation that you've had, you bring the ideas and the thoughts of everyone that you've ever touched with this a thought and idea. And eventually your brain puts it all together and goes, aha, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and yeah. that's why I completely agree with you that it, it's really the, the allowing everyone to come together and share their thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, that's fantastic. Um, Speaking directly to your talk then, why should people come and listen to your talk during the conference? Uh, Ro, would you like to speak on that? Yeah, so that's, it's always an interesting question to ask, isn't it? Because um, to, I think for Charlotte and I, we're not very ego driven. So it's like, well, you know, please come, but you don't have to come if you don't want to. Yeah. Like, <laughs> come if you want. <laughs> yeah, come if you want to. So um, putting, thinking, what, what is it, you know, if I were going to this talk, what would I actually want to, to get from this? And, and obviously we, we've done our little spiel in terms of what, what the talk is going to be about. Um, and I, I guess there are three things really when we think about teams. Well, first of all, we assume that self-organizing teams happen by magic, which they don't for one thing. You know, Charlotte and I have both been in teams um, in the past where the teams have been all over the shop, you know, <laughs> not really a team. <laughs> yeah. And they're definitely not a team. Um, and they don't know where they're going. They haven't got a purpose. It's, you know, completely directionless. You've got all sorts of different characters in the team who are throwing, um, you know, 
things into the the melting pot which then take the team in a different direction so it can be quite chaotic so if you're thinking about that environment and particularly in the agile environment as well where people are being asked to work together in cross-functional teams um, and usually not for very long periods of time so you want to make sure that when they are working together that's they're getting the best out of that time together so the three things that really we're going to focus on because we've only got 30 minutes we're going to be talking about how, how teams make decisions, some of the processes that sit behind that, um, and also what decisions are within their gift to make, and often that isn't expressed. Um, so teams think they can make decisions on things which they can't, and that then causes the next thing, which is conflict. So how do you have healthy conflict in teams? So we've just been talking about cognitive diversity and diversity in general, and that's why it's important because you want that bit of frizzon in the team to create that and sort of energetic creative spark. So how do you make conflict a, a force for good rather than a, a force for, for evil, as it were? And then the final thing is, that, which we've already mentioned that Charlotte mentioned, which is creating trust. And when we're talking about trust in teams, we're actually talking about psychological safety because we're talking about more than one person. So they're the sort of the three key areas that we'll be focusing in on. And then, of course, we do promise that, you know, as a coach, well, what, what is your ultimate mission? You know, I'm a, a huge Star Trek fan. So what's your prime directive? Well, your prime directive <laughs> is to help the team become self-sustaining so that they not only can coach each other, but then they can go on and help coach other teams. So then we're going to be sharing just a couple of things about how you might do that um, if you want to help teams coach themselves. So that in a very, very short um, a few sentences is what the talk is about. So hopefully that's ignited enough curiosity to get you to come along to the talk. And hopefully, um, as Charlotte said, we do like having fun as well. So we will be having a few laughs as well. So if you don't have a sense of humour, please stay away. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> that great. Yeah, absolutely. And a few stories too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good. Amazing. Well, it sounds really interesting. And I love that, you know, everything we've kind of talked about today is actually kind of tied into, to, exactly. you know, what your talk's going to be about. So that sounds really interesting. So thank you for sharing that. Um, a final question for you both, which is much more personal than professional. Um, and uh, Ro, I'll just go back to you first, as uh, we love listening to your voice. Um, <laughs> what are you most looking forward to after COVID has settled down? So for me, and I'm guessing this probably won't be that different for Charlotte either, but for me, it's being able to go back and see my family in the UK. Um, you know, living in, in Western Australia, it's been very, very challenging and confronting talking with my family on a regular basis and hearing how they're coping or not with what's been happening in the UK. And we've been so fortunate in, in WA because of you know we are so isolated and you know my heart goes out to everybody in the UK and, and the states and everywhere else that's been so badly affected by the pandemic so being able to go back and hug my family that's yeah that's that's what's mm. really going to be good for me oh lovely I'm happy to hear that I hope I hope that can be soon yes. think, well <laughs> as soon as we can, <laughs> as as we can. Yeah. yeah 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 and uh Charlotte yeah. how about for you yeah, the same really for me because I've got family in, in mainland Europe and, and in the UK and it is the opportunity to go back and to see them and, um, you know, spend time with them. And yeah, again, I suppose, you know, it's just having that connection again, that human connection. I mean, as, as Rose said, we've been very lucky. We, we, you know, I've just actually been fortunate that I've been away to, to, to meet a few people at a, uh, an event today um, and we've had no restrictions on us. In fact, all those restrictions have gone However, we understand that, you know, for our family and our friends, that's not been the same. And, and it is about that connection um, and how important it is, not yeah. just, you know, we've been able to do this, right, great, and have video talks, but it's not the same as having that physical presence. And, um, and that's definitely um, what I can't wait to do once we can travel again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Ro, I love that you said hug. I'm a big hugger. And um, it's just one of those things that, you know, I, I've seen uh, because pubs opened yesterday. So I saw my one of my best friends for the first time in in months and months yesterday. We don't even live that far apart. And I went to go hug her and she went to go hug me. And we're like, wait a second, are we allowed to hug? I, I'm confused. <laughs> you know, so I so I really I'm personally, I would love to just get back to the point where we're not worried about giving each other a hug or a handshake or a pat on the back you know I'd really love to to go back to that um that level of of, of 
not worry. I guess whatever the opposite of worry is comfortableness, yeah. but, uh, but yeah. Mm. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate having both of you here. Um, you know, I've learned a lot about a lot more about your talk than I knew before, and I'm really excited. So I hope that quite a few people will also be interested in joining you at the conference. So thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you very much. It's been great. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Kat. It's been great. Great to meet you. Great. Great yeah. to meet you guys, too. Thank you so much.